good morning! What we're doing today is I'm going to be making my own kale chips. Now, I've been making kale chips in the oven for about a year, year and a half now. However, I've never been content with the consistency or the taste of it. So today, what I'm going to be trying to mimic would be Brad's Raw Crunchy Kale Chips, their naked version. Now, for any of you who are doubters or haven't had any, that is a particular brand I would suggest to try out. It's a great intro. They say it tastes like Doritos. I don't think so as much, but it's definitely a very good taste that I can eat the entire box within a matter of like 30 minutes, which isn't very good since the price is $4.99, which is ridiculous. So today what I'm going to try and do is make my own with the dehydrator. So I have the kale already prepped. I had the cashews sitting overnight in a bowl of water so that they can kind of get a little bit fluffier so it's easier when you're trying to process them in the blender. So let's get started. So the recipe I'm using calls for a bunch of kale, peppers, cashews that have sat overnight in a bowl of water, yeast, lemons, olive oil, garlic powder, cumin, sea salt, and crushed red peppers. So I've already started by washing the kale. It's already being dried out my dry rack over here. Now what I need to do is cut up a few of the peppers. So the recipe called for a bunch of red peppers. However, I don't have enough to make the quantity that I am dehydrating. So I'm just using a bunch of little mini red, yellow, and orange peppers. I'm sure it won't taste any different. I'm not a professional. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> so I washed out the peppers so that there are no seeds, no more dirt in them. I'm going to throw them into the blender. I'm going to drain out the cashews because there's a lot of liquid still in it. And now I'm going to add this to the blender as well. So here's the fun part. I am awful at math, so we get to try and figure out the amount we need to throw in. The nutritional yeast is the fun part. You can either break it down by seven grams or half an ounce, which needs to be converted into cups. Hey, so you're great at math. Um, can you please convert ounces to cups? How many ounces are in a cup? Math, how many ounces? in a cup. Eight US fluid ounces. So I have, well I have, in these yeast packets, I have a quarter ounce. Now you're talking weight versus wet measurement versus dry measurement, it doesn't work. I don't know what's up with this recipe. Um, with yeast, I would probably just use half a packet for whatever recipe you're using. What else do we need to add? Yeast. It's alive! Lemon juice. You know what's not fun? Finding out how many cuts are on your hands because you just squeeze the life out of a lemon. Ow. Ow. Oh. Four tablespoons of olive oil. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. <laughs> so professional, oh my gosh. Two teaspoons of cumin. Three teaspoons of sea salt. <laughs> I'm getting it everywhere. <laughs> Four hours later. Okay. And then a pinch of crushed red peppers. And then we get to mix. Now we pray that we have enough of everything. Come to Jess's kitchen where we just make shit up on the fly. Okay. We get to blend our lovely concoction of ingredients together. Press down and pray. So now we get to actually play with the kale. Now, any of your fancy schmancy people are gonna tell you to take your kale and cut it up and blah, blah, blah. 
frankly, I ain't got time for that. So I just pull mine apart like this and just go around the stem because you're never actually gonna wanna eat the stem. It's just too bitter. This recipe tells me that it needs to be at a certain temperature for two and a half hours. However, I have one of those old dehydrators from the 90s, so we don't get a choice in temperature. We just, we go with God and just believe that it's going to dehydrate at the perfect temperature. So I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on it so that I, you know, make sure it doesn't get overly crispy. Because nobody wants that. We're looking for a chewy yet crispy taste. So fingers crossed I can obtain that. Oh my God, this is taking forever. Thank God we finally finished up picking up all the little pieces of kale so they actually look like little chips. And then, Oh man, this is gonna get so messy. Oh no, one everywhere. <laughs> Don't do this without adult supervision. <laughs> There's no point in cleaning my hands because now we get to the messy part. Ugh. It's so gooey. Oh. Oh. God. For the love of kale. It's like if you stuck your hand in chickpeas. Oh. It looks so gross. It's like if you we're hands deep in tuna fish. Ugh. Now we get to add all of our vegan cheese covered kale onto our dehydrator plates. Okay, so now I have my kale chips sitting in the dehydrator. I also have one to go in the oven uh, because frankly I ran out of the plates to put it on. And second, because I'd like to just see what the difference is. So I'm putting this in at 375. I'm gonna check in on it in the next, I'd say 10 minutes. Timer is set. And we'll check back when they're done. All right, so now it's eight o'clock five hours on the dehydrator just due to the fact like I said it was an older model it's nothing fancy it took a little bit of time but here are the results so as you can see it has a very nice quality to it they're not too crunchy they taste almost identical to Brad's quality which is phenomenal so no longer spending four dollars and 99 cents on each set which is great Chewy, but crunchy. It really does, it tastes really good. Let me show you what happened with the other ones though. Literally just a pile of death. Oven, dehydrator, black, green. So I'm gonna say I'm a firm believer in the dehydrator and I look forward to multiple projects. Thanks for watching my adventures in making kale chips. Here's to another episode.